Hi, I'm John Ferguson, and today I'm up front on OTR. Off the Record with Michael Lansford, brought to you by the Keg Steakhouse and Bar. For great steaks, good friends. See you tonight. Those were the best of times for John Ferguson and the Maple Leafs beat the Sens in 2004 up front. John Ferguson, you beat them because they didn't have quote unquote hockey heart. Is that still a problem for the Senators? Well, I mean, I, I don't get that sense. No, I mean, they, they are, they have been out without their heart, in my estimation, Alfredson. Uh, they still play hard. Something has changed there, obviously. Uh, it's going to take some time to figure out what it is. So help us understand. I mean, it's their business to do it. We're just having fun talking about it. Sure. What's wrong with a Senators team that went to the final cruising last year, got off to one of the best starts in history, and now has fallen flat? You know, you look at their record over the last 60-some games, I think they're right around 500, maybe a shade below. And, and uh, you know, it, it's... It's different things at different times, and it's been goaltending at times, it's been defense, team defense. The one thing that I can see, their goals against are up, and that's, that's it in a nutshell. Talk from a general manager's standpoint. How concerned would you be if you had Spezza seven years, 49, if you had Heatley six years, 45, given their lack of playoff production in the final last year and this year? Well, it's hard to assess a long-term deal like that in short periods of time, and, and some deals have started out great, turn out poorly and, and some deals come back and, and really look good. These guys produce, they get 50 goal scorer in a Heatley, Spez at 90 something points. Those numbers reflect that kind of performance. Uh, them in the first round, uh, they need to be better. Give me your first blush reaction to these two words, Sean Avery. Competitor, real hard competitor. So you're smiling, right? So when you saw him doing this and waving and getting in the face, you, you weren't offended by that as a hockey guy, were you? Uh, no, I wasn't offended, no. I mean, but I think what needs to be pointed out is that he, he also wasn't facing the puck. You know, he can as easily take that puck in the back of the head when his point man shoots, uh, but, but it, it clearly should not be allowed. Ra waving the stick in someone's face, I don't think that's appropriate. And uh, unsportsmanlike call is a good call. Would you agree with me that his stock, regardless of his behavior, is now way up? Well, his stock's up not because of this incident. I mean, he's done enough things to draw attention to himself. He scores, he produces, he hits, he fights. If you're the general manager of a National Hockey League team and you've got cap space, would you make an offer for Sean Avery this summer? I would. I, I tried to acquire him from L.A. before uh, Glenn did. And what happened there? Uh, you know what? I, I talked to uh, Dean a couple different times that year. And, Dean and, Lombardi. Yeah, Dean Lombardi. And... and uh, Ultimately, I think he felt that the, the cliche he ended up getting from uh, the Rangers was what he was looking for. Uh, he said that uh, Glenn beat him down finally, but uh, Avery's record in the Rangers lineup is superb. Matt Sundin had a great year. Uh, people are divided, though, on whether the Maple Leafs should bring him back because they'll be a big ticket, probably going to command a raise from last season. Should the Maple Leafs bring him back at six, six and a half million dollars? Because if you do that, then you're truly not rebuilding. Well, you know, uh, I think Matt's would be worth every penny uh, of any of those figures. Uh, he came in cheaper than that. Uh, he produced and continues to produce. He's easily the, the top player. So are you of the belief that they have to bring him back? Oh, I would bring him back, absolutely. What's your take on Darcy Tucker? You signed him to a deal four years, $3 million a season, based on the kind of play that Sean Avery gives the Rangers. Absolutely. Do you think that he's just past it, that all of a sudden the years have taken their toll on him? Uh, I don't think so, no. He, he had an off year for Darcy Tucker this year, especially the first half, and, and uh, he knows that as well as anyone else. But does uh, he, he bring did... the energy? Forget about the goal scoring, because he ended up with 18. Does yeah. he bring, uh, were you satisfied with the energy that he brought? Uh, I, think, I think he brought that in the second half, but he is clearly the type of playoff performer that would be excelling in this year's playoffs had they made it. He's John Ferguson. Love your candor. Love the fact that you're doing this, and you're a pretty darn good broadcaster on TSN. Stay, well, I was going to say stay there, but actually move aside for a sec. He'll come back for next question, and the panel's coming up next. Off the Records Up Front is brought to you by Amp Energy Drink. Fuel for whatever. And later, when John returns for next question, he'll tell us the best trade he made as the Leaf GM and the worst. Off the Record with Michael Landsberg, brought to you by the Keg Steakhouse and Bar. For great steaks, good friends. 
See you tonight. The guys will laugh. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. That's <laughs> bullshit. That's bullshit. <laughs> uh, once again at OTR, we are the leaders in out-of-context video, but come on, who wasn't thinking that? The Gladiator now ranks as the standard for pregame embarrassment. Now Carl Lewis singing the anthem in a Gladiator suit. That would be gold. Rick Natris, you're standing there on the blue line, yeah. playoff game, biggest game of the season. What are you doing if you well, hear that? Well, I would take my focus off my job. That's I'm thinking, what the heck are they would doing Would you be smirking? Here? Would you be trying well, to I keep the I would try not, be trying not to, but at the end of the day, that was pretty stupid. Great to have you on the Thank show, you. as always. Mark Pavlich, welcome back to the show and congratulations. President, Maximum Fighting, number one promotion, fight promotion across this country. Yes, good for sir. you, man. Good for Todd Lushko. I don't know why, but good for you. <laughs> oh, Former man. Calgary Flames forward. You got the boot on your uh, on your shirt. What else is important? Well, just we've uh, started up a uh, hockey training facility. You'll tell in us more about that okay, later. Okay, we'll on, see right? you later. Yeah, like we'll ever get to it. <laughs> and Nikki Davis, Toronto Sun columnist, Toronto radio personality, all star on this show. Good to go. Good to go. The Sens have not missed a playoff since 1996. That's 11 straight seasons in the playoffs. So when I throw out a negative question, I kind of feel guilty. But as they are looking down the barrel of a first round four-game sweep, do they need to truly examine the makeup of this team, or can they say, we're solid, it's just an offseason? I think they could say it, but I don't think they are. I think they've had too much turmoil within the dressing room. They blame that, it on Paddock that a little right bit. that right there is a reason to blow it up. No, I don't know they blow it up. Cause you, how can you blow up a Spezza, Heatley, Alfred Because, Sam, they, because they can't win. They can't win when it matters. You you know, they can't win when it matters. I mean, every year, they, they start off well, they do okay, they get to the playoffs, they bow. How many they teams haven't won the Stanley Cup? It doesn't matter if you have one to say. That's your point. That's your point. No, but you can say that about anything. That's, that's your point. Weak, they it's got a, a weak answer. How no, many people have one to say? Hold on, it's a question. Hold on, Todd. It's a question. Todd. No, it is a question, but it's weak. Though. Nick, they got, the, they got the Stanley Cup final last year. The couple breaks here and there, they would have had Stanley Cup rings on their fingers. But they you didn't do it when it counted. You, you, and, and so, you know so just because, so if Anaheim last year would have come up one game short or something, you would have blown that whole team up because they didn't do it? The difference between Anaheim and Ottawa, Ottawa has been dysfunctional this year. No one can argue that. They've been dysfunctional in the dressing room. They've been dysfunctional in the last five years. They've been dysfunctional Management, you can't argue that. Who's had more success, Ottawa analyze. or Anaheim last five years? Overall okay. playoff success? Probably Ottawa. Okay, exactly. let me ask Probably you this. Ottawa, let but me this ask year was so okay, bad. Okay, hold on, hold on. Well, Let's also mention while you throw that out there, Anaheim did go to game seven of the Stanley Cup final. Sure, they did. Right, yeah, okay, so. So, but a couple of years before, same thing, Ottawa. You're going to blow it up because they didn't get the game no, down last year. No, it's not because of Pavlich. Pavlich. To become a great franchise in any sport, NFL, NHL, great franchise, do not panic. That's the number one thing. You watch they history. Tweak it. But this they tweak it. panicking, though. You move things but around. This isn't panicking. You don't replace everybody. You talk to Spets on the side, you talk to Alfredson on the side. like you're panicking. Yeah. You, no, but this is not you know, well, Let me ask you this. This is, this is a team, 11 years in a row, Hold that on. have turmoil and everything going on but in they their organization. Had turmoil for 11 years. We look at Toronto. They've had the same turmoil, and they panic. haven't made the playoffs. Yeah, you should panic. So <laughs> my point is this. The core players of these guys, you can't just, what, then what's the timeline? You don't need to get rid of all five, what's the all timeline? three of them or all four of them. Get rid of a couple of them. Move them around because you know what? Something is not working. Well, I'm sure there's people standing in line to take them, but if you're in a panic mode. But it's not panic. Well, the chemistry, everybody's perceived the chemistry it to be panic. of this team is not working for whatever I reason. I think there's a big thing in leadership there, and that's the biggest issue they have to address right now. How, that, how they do that. 
do they bring in you know more uh, veteran leadership guys? I don't know. Are they about, out there? Are you talking about on ice leadership or both. off it, ice it, leadership? It I think it's on ice. Both. I think it's on ice. It's on ice, and you have to put those guys aside. You have to take the Spetses and the Alfredsons and put them in a room together. And it might have been done this year, but it has to be redone again and start making sure that no one's bigger than the Ottawa Senators. Right. And, and okay. I think I think it would be really wrong to criticize Daniel. No, 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 hold on, no, hold on one no, sec. No, okay. I just say that you know last year we carried him in the playoffs. Even though, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Okay. And even though the big guys, Heatley and Spets, had disappeared in the final, Alfredson was unbelievable. Oh, and this year he's got a serious knee injury and he comes back. Good for him. Can I say one thing? Yeah. Remember years ago you said if you're doing too much talk and the show sucks? Yeah. yeah. Then <laughs> shut up. Okay? No, hold, so on, we hold on. Go. Hold on. You know what Maybe I mean? what I'm saying, Rick, is the show sucks. <laughs> <laughs> well, my point is, Alfredson, I'm not saying anything about Alfredson. To me, and I told you before, Gary Roberts told me this a couple years ago pound for pound, position for uh, position, anything that needs to go on on the ice. Daniel Alfredson is probably the best hockey player, all around hockey yes. player in the National Hockey League. Argument. Okay, so I don't argue with that, but you have to wonder this whole why is it management needed to take Emory aside? Why wasn't it the players? You're telling me in it Calgary when we won, it. it wasn't allowed. It wasn't the, allowed but, but for the management to I'm step in because it wasn't that, their that business. The problems in this team are much deeper to me than just moving, shifting guys around or finding a leader well, they're within about the country. character now. Okay, so, here, so, so that's why you got to so get rid of guys. No, I understand. Let's that. talk at the top. Brian Murray, if they go down in four, the guy that you know really runs this organization in every way, shape, or form. Would you, if you're Eugene Melnick, seriously consider making a change? No, absolutely not. Brian Murray's a proven winner. The guy's a great general manager. He was a good coach. He's got, every, he's got all the pieces in play right now. And, and this is the one thing I'm hearing everybody talk about, is saying that the Ottawa Senators got to change this. Every team in the NHL needs to change this and that. Sure. The teams I know, that are successful don't do that. Do they don't think, panic exactly what we talked about. It's not about panicking. It has been a slow simmer for this team all year. They started out really well. They have a great beginning of the season. And it, it, the last two-thirds of the season have well, been so abysmal in terms of everything. On ice, off ice, management, player. It's been so pathetic. It's beyond to me repair. Well, let me where say you this one, one thing to you. First, they hired an assistant coach to become a head coach that was in the That's organization, right. which I've never, and the, his, as far as I've known, never been successful. I could be wrong, probably, mm -hmm. but at the end of the day, and then you've got a situation where you got players in today's in game. If they don't like what's happening to them, then they can quit. And that's what are you going to do to them? Well, that's you okay, okay, okay. Let me ask you this, Rick. Have I given you a chance to speak? And always jumping in, no, you're no, getting offended good, or no, whatever. Like, no, I'm so not offended. I just you're taking too much of the focus on that sweater and taking it off of me. <laughs> <laughs> well, why don't I put my focus onto the boot on your shirt, which reminds me of the old days when you would wear rubber boots when it was raining. Hang the good old days. End. So what's going on with you? Tell me about this hockey lot. Real quick, we've got a Todd Harvey, myself, have a training facility up in Cambridge, Ontario, coming for the whole community up there. It's called the Hockey Loft. Hockeyloft.ca. Check it out. It's going to be coming very soon. Nicely done. Good promo. Tight. Good job. <laughs> and don't forget, really off the record, why would you? Who doesn't want more of Rick and Mark and Nikki and what's his name over there? Today, <laughs> today we talk uh, about general manager. Uh, Notice, should he be fired? We'll talk about that. And later, when former Leaf GM John Ferguson returns for next question, he'll tell us who was the first Leaf to call him after he got fired. people in the news media, all of you uh, dwell on some negative piece of like that. It just so all of you media people can go yourselves when it comes to something like that. Bobby Knight expressing what Avery was thinking right there. Sean Avery, to me, looks like Lindsay Lohan craves the attention. Then when the cameras show up, it's get out of my face. In Lohan's case, of course, it's uh, pan down. He's a buffoon, Avery is, and a boor. And as the Rangers and the Devils get set for game number four tonight, I got to ask you, is he also the number one irritant in the game today? I would classify him as a d 
you know, at, plain and simple. I think he's a good hockey player. He takes away from that a little bit. But that right there, I mean, he can do whatever he wants. But at the end of the day, you got to... I 100% disagree. I, I can't believe it's, it's, it's a, the stereotypical words from coming from a Canadian or Canadian people. <laughs> we, we are so shy to get a little attention to our sport, especially bad in the NHL. Attention, but it's, bad attention, though. It is bad attention. attention. Just, what's bad about it, it was, it's, it's it was working. And he scored in the game, too. Did, did everybody no, forget that, No, no, too? he did score shortly after. That's a problem. Yeah. NHL yeah. hockey now, people maybe in the United States are talking about Avery. People are talking about Avery. But, We're talking about, about Avery. The game for the wrong reason, It doesn't though. matter. At least they're tuning into the game to it find out what a great score it is. Any way to get him there. Once they get there, get him there. Nick, if Avery wasn't doing stuff, we wouldn't be talking about it. I agree. I think he's a too. Every time I come on the show, we always talk about Avery Amazing. in some capacity. Amazing. You know, they always say bad but, press but is if, better than no but press if at all. people are watching it for the wrong reason, when they actually go to see a game, and then they, that's not what the game is about, uh, then what do they say? Go back, when I go back to the, how many goals you scored, they don't ask you how, how no you got them, just how many you exactly. got. So if the audience is there, more power to it. But at the end of the day, ah. this guy can play hockey. He just... The, he l wants the attention, and I think the attention. You know eventually what he is? Is when he came back, back on, when he came back and shot the finger to the camera, that's more attention. He's not, he's not right. shunning the attention away. He's 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 it's, it's something it. just like you see NBA uh, basketball players constantly. They walk away from their bus, they'll shoot the camera, the bird, and then they're in the paper the next day. Next day, the contract comes just up, they get more interest, money. Just, yeah, yeah, just out of interest, what did you call him? A d what do you think he is? I, I think he's one of the best agitators of all time. So we got your word. We got agitator. What do you think he is? WWE Entertainment. What do you think he is? The Dennis Rodman of hockey. And isn't it possible? You're all correct, right? Yeah. There's a dimension of that, oh, and isn't that what makes him effective at the end of the day? That's what makes he him marketable, effective. though, Michael. But he is that effective. makes him marketable. But that's, that's what you guys keep forgetting. That's what makes you have him to make him marketable. In the NHL right now, there's five or six players that you ever talk okay. about. Ovechkin, Crosby. Yeah. Uh, oh, Avery, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. Wait True. a second. We just skipped over a bunch of great hockey players because... There's nothing to them. They can't speak properly. There's when a you method to up. his madness. There, there are definitely is. But what is he selling? Is he selling himself or is he selling the he's game? Selling he's selling himself. He's, he's selling himself. He's selling the game. Along with hold it, on, it hold comes. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. But sometimes they both it. work in Well, he's not the first and only guy that's done it, and he's not the first guy that's had success with it, or guys that have failed doing it and become not marketable. So let me ask you this. You two hockey guys jump in first. Do you like the NHL revising or rewriting or creating a new Rule 75? It reads like this now. It's two minutes for, quote, waving arms or stick in front of the goaltender's face for the purposes of improperly interfering with and or distracting the goaltender. Do you like that call? I think it's to change things halfway or not even halfway at the end of a season just to benefit something that embarrassed the league, I say no. I think now it's 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 an idiotic move to make. They're, they're trying to protect the integrity of the game, but you know you don't you do not change a rule in the middle of the class. I don't think they change the rule. Because they you just know what? Defined because it. Defined it. They defined it. Defined it. I think they made a clear, define, clear Where do you draw the line? You can't though. define them in the middle of a playoff exactly. series. Exactly. Why not? What is this? You can't do that. Why not? Okay. What other sport has year, ever done that? Let me ask you this: in that si that situation, Never. if I was a secondary uh, guarding a receiver and I did that, I'd be okay until the ball hit me. That's so right. when the puck hit him twice when he was doing them, that's when the call should have been made. Sure. No, but the that's the, the definition but, of the rule. The ref didn't make the, a, call. A, the, ref didn't no, make the initial that. call. Why? Because it wasn't a penalty. Well, he it, wasn't no, it, it's he interference. Was, but he hasn't, it's wasn't verbal. Interference. Interference. What's interference? Until, what's interference? What's interference? What's, there was no interference. Hold on, hold on, he never touched interference? Interference? him. I call that interference. What is though? What he's doing is, to me, breaks the spirit of the rules of the game. I think it's stupid. So if you have a heckler, and he's bugging ah, you all night. Yeah, heckler's so not. So kick that guy out because my number one guy's getting upset. But, guys are but do they not? Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on. Do they not kick? Do they not kick hecklers out though? Because I know they do another. They kick hecklers out all the time. Don't get away from it. I know. What is the job of screening a player, the goaltender in front of the net? Not let him see the puck. Right. You don't want to let him see the. So so now they're saying improperly doing that. That's what I don't understand. Different levels of distraction here now. We're not saying that's what every guy does, right? But Michael, it's 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 in it's not in the spirit of the rules of what he's doing. Okay, so let me ask you this. It is an embarrassment to the rules. I'm sorry. It's an embarrassment to hockey. Look, let me ask you this. If I'm standing, I've never done this before. I'm going to get up. We need a wide shot on this. If I'm standing in front of the net now, I'm facing you. I'm not putting my arms up, yeah. but you're the goaltender, and I'm doing this. I'm sparing you nothing wrong with it. You're not what? I'm sparing you in the bag. I'm sitting down it's in a hurry. Yeah. I think, again, that identif that to identify that rule, again, I don't know if, if I'm a secondary receiver, and I'm blocking doing this, and it hits me, it's a penalty for interference. Yeah. If it hits him in behind, why isn't He's it He's the first person that ever came up with it. That's yeah. why everybody's all shocked. Well, right. I've seen, I've seen yeah. it done before. Not like but that. He, he, not like that. He, he was showing Berdeur what type of stick he had. It was yeah. like an Easter or something. So I'm going to say this, because I know everyone's names. Mark Pavlik. Nick Davis, Todd Lusko, Rick Natras. Awesome show today. I loved it. John Ferguson's returning for next question as we go to break. It relates to that Gladiators pregame show. 
I don't mind it if they go with it in Ottawa, but it should be, hey Spencer, hey Eatley, <laughs> score a freaking goal. That I'd like. <laughs> The Record's email of the day is brought to you by Molson Canadian Lager. There's only one true Canadian taste. Mike, I'd say that's a bunch of crap. I don't get this. Well, I'm old. Next question. Oh, boy. <laughs> uh, Paul Maurice, look forward to having him laugh on this show again. John Ferguson, we love the fact that you're sitting there smiling. You're a great guest. You ready to do this thing? Absolutely. You graduated cum laude with the degree of Juris Doctor. What the hell is that? Uh, that's uh, Latin for uh, uh, a, a legal degree. Yeah, a university boy, aren't you? You got yeah, it. It shows. Absolutely. What would you look like in a playoff beard? Not great. Which member of the Toronto media are you kind of happy you don't have to deal with him or her anymore? Oh, <laughs> I can't name enough. <laughs> Next question. Uh, no, you answered it just fine. Uh, who would win in a fight? Chuck Norris or Gary Roberts? It's the big question these days. Robs. You like Robs, right? Absolutely. You regret not signing him? Yeah, I do. What's your most vivid memory of your father's playing career in Montreal? Uh, I, I guess probably uh, I wasn't alive for all the cups, but the cups. When was the last time you threw a Tim Hortons cup in anger? Uh, I think it was game two against Ottawa. You remember the video I'm talking about, right? Yes. Did it bug you that the camera would be trained on you? No. No. What NHL arena has the most uncomfortable GM's box? Ottawa. Will you be applying for the vacant GM's position in Vancouver? Uh, I haven't applied for any jobs and, and uh, I won't start. What was your best move as a Leafs general manager? Uh, probably acquiring Tosca and uh, signing Caberly. To a great deal, for sure. 
I'll say Absolutely. you might not say What was your worst move, do you think, looking back? It's hard to say yet. I mean, if Rask... Well, many up, people have said, by the way. Go ahead. <laughs> no, but you finish your thought. I'm, I'm trying to think. I, I can't think of one. You started no. saying Tuka Rask. Yeah, it depends how Rask comes out. I mean, you know, we'll see. I mean, Raycroft didn't have anywhere near the year we thought he would. Did Yuri Tulushti ever nibble on your ear? No. Did you guys laugh when you saw the picture, front page of the Sun? Yes. What jersey will Matt Sundin be wearing next season? Leaf jersey. Give me one word to describe MLSE. Great. How old is Cliff Fletcher? Take 72, a guess. 72. 73. I like the fact you underestimated. That's a compliment. Would you sign Sean Avery in the offseason? Yes. Would you sign Ray Emery? No. Who's the best golfer on the Maple Leafs? Sunday. Who was the first Leaf to call you after you were fired? Uh, might have been the first. Yeah. I mean, Kabina. And finally, well, and well, he should have. And finally, <laughs> when's the last time you spoke with Richard Petty? Uh, January 22nd, probably. And I'm glad you spoke with us today. Thanks, John. Your class all the way. You got it. Absolutely. Off the Record's next question is brought to you by the Keg Steakhouse and Bar. For great steaks, good friends, see you tonight. Seven nonstop flights each weekday from Montreal to New York. We know why you fly. We're American Airlines. Michael Landsberg's clothing supplied by Got Style, Toronto's newest menswear store and spa. There's another odd man chance. Matt Sundin in score. is coming in off the wing. The shot's going. Stajan. The Leaf Nation is here tonight, and they're enjoying this one.